Hi guys, how are you guys? So today we are on a very different timing. It's bedtime here. <laughs> It's the It's best the afternoon. timing here. <laughs> yeah, um, but the reason why we have a very special timing is because we have a very special guest today and she's in the UK. And that is why we had to coordinate a different time. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it is indeed Amelia Rose. Uh, but before we bring her in, I just wanted to do a couple of housekeeping. So uh, some people are still maybe confused about the calendar. So I posted it again. Well, I just posted it on my community posts. Uh, so all the... different timings and uh, daylight saving different timings are all updated on the calendar so you can go and double check that and you know by just following Kat and myself and just making sure that um, you look at maybe click on that little notify button to make sure that you know when these live streams come on that's also another tip for not missing Uh, the beginning the time of the show. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, of course, today we have Kat with us, my co-host, and then I'm going to bring in Amelia, Amelia Rose. Very exciting. Hi, Hi. Amelia. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. So it's good to have you. Thank yes, you for having I know me. it's super early for you, 7 a.m., Yeah. very, very early. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on our Of course. show. You've been highly requested. People love uh, your collection. And um, for those of you who don't, actually, well, please follow Amelia. Her channel is Amelia Rose's Closet. And it's already linked in the description box. You just click on her at name. Um, but yeah, for those who may or may not know you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, any of your hobbies, passion, whatever you want to share? Yeah. Um, well, handbags, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> But the, that kind of came, I suppose, as a second, as an escape. I have two young boys who are three and six. I have four dogs. I still work full time. I have a business. I own a business. So it's a bit mental and a bit crazy. So handbags were always kind of an interest and a passion. So I, through lockdown, find it difficult. I've never been a stay-at-home mom. I've always worked. So I find it difficult being at home with the children. And I don't, obviously, I love them to death. Um, but I have definitely a renewed respect for parents that stay at home because it's not easy. And I really missed the social side of work and getting out and being around people. Stumbled across YouTube, really didn't really know. I remember my husband saying to me years ago when he was asking me what I wanted for something and him saying to me, handbags aren't a hobby. You know, that you can't. that's not a hobby. It's like, yes, it is. <laughs> and stumbled across YouTube and Instagram and realized, oh my goodness, there's a whole community of people out there that, that just talking about handbags and are interested in handbags and it can actually be a hobby. So I started YouTube. No, that's wrong. I started Instagram first and then I like to talk. So that kind of led on to YouTube then. So I do that. And then I obviously have four dogs, which take a lot of time and they're a hobby in themselves. They're, they're a lot, but I love them. They're like four extra children. <laughs> they're, they're they take a lot of a lot of work but they're amazing oh that sounds amazing I didn't know that you had four dogs yeah I, mean, I think I, I when love I watched some of your videos I saw like a dog or two but I don't I didn't know it was like four dogs <laughs> hard to get them all at one place at one time <laughs> sitting still um but there's yeah there's four of them um and they're all the same breed so you could see two and another two and think it's the same two But it's it's busy, like it is busy with them, but they're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun and they keep things light and they keep mm. you, you have to, like them and the kids, you have to get up, you have to do things, you have to yeah. be outside, you can't. Keeps you active. Just, yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. I love great. the idea, but I... Uh, well, I I don't know for sure if my husband is allergic, but he's he would say something like that, you know, it's like, oh, I'm allergic to pets. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, they just don't want to take care of having to, you know, When pick we got up the, the poop first and one, stuff like that. I, But I, I think didn't. that's just one part of it, right? It's they are, yeah, they are children. You have oh, to. Oh, totally! Like, what? Well, I I love animals, and when we got yeah. the first. the first puppy I didn't tell my husband he oh. wasn't my husband back then I think were we engaged but I waited till we had an argument and 
I'm quite fiery and he would be less fiery. So I waited till we had an argument that was his fault and one that was definitely his fault. So I waited to then and then whenever I wasn't speaking to him, I just went and got the puppy and didn't tell him. And then um, he said, he came into the house and he said, where are you going tonight? And I said, I'm going to get my puppy. And he laughed and he said, no, you're not. And I said, yes, I am. But it had been a pretty bad argument and he was trying to get back into the good books. So I, I timed it well. And then he was, <laughs> he was, I'm very impulsive as well. Very impulsive. And he was like, are you really going to get a puppy? Yes. And off I went, come home with the puppy. But the argument had been so bad, he didn't want to say too much because he was trying to get back into my good books. And <laughs> yeah, home came Louis. That was Louis, who's our first. And he, I'm um, not the best way to buy, um, to, to take animals, anybody out there that's looking for animals. But I'm so impulsive. We didn't even have a bed or food or anything. I just went and got him and off we came home. And now there's four. Wow. <laughs> what a great story. And my husband would have told you he wouldn't be as much of an animal person. And when we first met, you know, he didn't want a dog. He wouldn't have been. And no, there's four. So we, we see how that went. <laughs> Maybe that's the strategy here. Yeah, I, well, I want to get one now because uh, after I came back from America, my brother has a poodle, a little mini poodle. I think it's a mini poodle. And I'm like, oh my God, I think I want a, want a poodle now. But I think I might be like you, Amelia. I'll just go out and buy one and not sure what to do with it later. I'm like, oh no, there's no food in the house. And I but bought then, him before I knew anything about, like we now have, we now support a lot of animal charities and now we have rescue dogs and things. But mm. I, I didn't even know any of it. I hadn't done any research, didn't know any of that. And I, luckily when we bought him, it all worked out well. But obviously you have to be so careful buying, especially sought after breeds because there's so many readers out there doing really nasty things but mm. I hadn't even looked into any of that I just went it was like buying a new coat and home came the puppy now luckily he was not just for Christmas and he is very much my son but not much planning and very impulsive and my husband was like I can't believe you've just brought home a puppy oh my goodness <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> can you tell us are you the same with handbags <laughs> Oh Is yeah, that how you got started with it. <laughs> I am like, I am so impulsive about everything I do in life. Like, I I will take. I opened my business pretty much on a whim, on impulse. Oh wow! Um, my husband had always talked about wanting to move away, to move somewhere warmer, and he like he lived in America for a couple of years. We both lived in Australia. We bit, and he wanted to move away. But I opened the business on a bit of a whim and thought, well, we'll you know, sure, we'll see how it goes. And then the next thing proper business and then I was saying to him oh well that's a bit harder to leave that now isn't it and how would I even do that and so impulsive same with handbags I have I have to learn I'm trying to work on it that you don't just see something like it buy it at these prices and then there's been things like I have bought on impulse and loved the look of and they're never going to work because I sometimes think I live this you know Hollywood walk of fame premier elite lifestyle that I certainly don't live with my four dogs and my welly boots and my two sons but I buy these bags thinking oh, I'm going to this premier or that or this outfit and then it's 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 hanging there because that's mm -hmm. not real life so impulsivity on everything everything badly <laughs> when when <laughs> when did you get started into luxury then and how would you describe your style otherwise with luck style with luxury or without with luxury like how did you start it? was it like your was it like the dog story where you <laughs> had a fight and you went out and buy a bag um there was a wee bit more planning to, isn't this isn't this a disgrace there was a wee bit more planning to the first bag than there was to the first puppy uh, <laughs> so i had all i was i i got my first bag for my 30th I hadn't really known, grown up, I don't come from money or a moneyed area or anything. So I come from um, social housing and a single parent. So I didn't really know what even Louis Vuitton, Chanel, what the designers were. So it definitely wasn't from that. But when I started working and started to get being out and about in work, I remember seeing Louis Vuitton canvas, the monogram. Mm. And not everywhere, because where I live and work, in work, you would see, yes, a bit more of it than you would see. Oh, did you find something? We have we have an intruder. I, I knew this would it's happen. It's okay. <laughs> Hello, child. 
that's okay. <laughs> you can have that. Take that back to your room, please. See that this is the reality of it. You know, there's. Okay, there's a child over there, but we'll just we'll not worry about that. So uh, you would see a bit more of handbags, luxury handbags around work than you would in general, but you still wouldn't see a huge amount of them. And I remember seeing a colleague who I'm still friendly with, with the Neverfill. And it was in the traditional monogram, and I love that. And I was just done for. And I remember saying to her, oh, I want to get to the point that, that I can get one of those. And she's a, a few, probably maybe five-ish years ahead of me. And she said, well, you know, you'd want to be aiming a wee bit higher than that. And I was like, no, no, that, that, that is my, that is what I want. That's my dream bag. So that's, I was fixated on it then. Only I couldn't get my head around the price. And when I say that now, compared to what sometimes is sitting behind me, is it's crazy to see how things have came on. But I couldn't get my head around that the price of the Neverfill. And when I bought mine, it was 550 euro for the GM, which is mm. about... 480 pounds and I think it's now about 1200 pounds so it wasn't even by today's standards very much money but for me when I looked at it and saw it was about nearly 500 pounds I thought I could never spend that on a handbag hmm, what little did I know but it that's what started it and then I was fixated on that bag and then I had planned to get it for my 30th and I was away with my friends and we did go and see it but I couldn't get over the price I was like I can't I just can't but then I was in Rome with my now husband for my 30th and I bought it then. And it was, I walked around with the biggest Cheshire grin and the chocolate brown shopping bag. And I just loved my life. I thought it was amazing. And that started this craziness, started it. <laughs> That's so amazing. I, I, I can relate to like not really knowing these brands. I mean, mm. I, I see LV around, but I, I don't really know like I, I know, but I don't know. And mm -hmm. Chanel, definitely, I did not know that it was so, like, it was this even higher tier. I had no idea. Um, but yeah, it's it's sort of very strange how uh, time has changed from being so, uh, like, we're, we're so hard on ourselves and being so scared of buying that thing, which, of course, if you compare it to the price today, it's like five times more, whatever times more. It's just so insane how much it has changed over the years and how now we're, like, talking about these prices and saying things like it's more reasonable and this and that and still just insane prices. But, it yeah. Is. <clears throat> I love this it's story. different language. Like there, there's prices now that I, and what's one of the reasons I started YouTube there's prices or I would be saying say a Chanel bag oh well this is seasonal so it was a bit more reasonable so it was four thousand pounds as opposed to six and people mm -hmm. in my normal life would look at me like I needed locked up put in a straight jacket and walk down the road because <laughs> that is just crazy talk and if mm -hmm. I were to have that conversation with the vast majority of people in my normal life, they really would think, what are you on? That's, that's crazy. But it, it's like a whole different language. And it's great to have a sort of community to talk about it and not look at you like you're completely crazy. But it's it's sometimes I have to not think about it rationally too much because when you set that aside, real life prices, it, it's nuts. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, so you don't want to. You don't want to go there. It's a, no, it's a community of like these people that keep spreadsheets and keep tallies and keep records of what they've spent on handbags. Not a chance that would give me nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Eh? Um, having said that, could you? I think you have some eye candy for us, right? Could you show us your oldest and perhaps your newest handbag so we can oldest? see the difference? This is the first. Yes. Okay. Let me let me enlarge you. So this Oops. doesn't even have the tags anymore. The the little string things. This is the one that I got. Oh! <laughs> so this will never go anywhere, even though she's retired from active daily use. But she doesn't have these little pulls are gone. You can see, like, I, I put this bag. You can replace those. All of these bits are just cracked. And yeah. Gone. The corners are pretty worn. Oh. But this bag had 10 years of daily use. So every time I go to work, which is every day, this would have been filled with laptops notebooks pens like there's pen marks inside it there's if i sh if i showed somebody who really takes really looks after the bags the inside of this bag they'd have a fit 
there's there's everything in this bag but it went to work every day for 10 years every time we went on a plane every time we went away for a weekend traveled this came with me this used to come to the beach this came everywhere so i i think for 10 years of really heavy use that's pretty okay i think but she is the oldest she sits up here we're in my office at the minute we're in my office because i thought if i came in my office this early in the morning we might escape my children for the full um live show but we have one over here who's playing with teddy bears and dinosaurs together so we'll just we'll skip past that so this is the oldest <laughs> she sits in my office beside my desk and generally holds papers of what i'm working on um, and then the newest is is well i have a confession oh, i love this one i just i saw your unboxing it was so epic i have a confession there's a couple of newer ones that are still in boxes that i haven't even opened yet <gasps> okay but, but we're gonna also skip past those so this is the newest of the ones that i've actually opened and where is the camera there is the camera well done amelia it's early everybody and um, so <laughs> this is this is the newest of the ones that i've actually opened and it's so usable i love this bag this is just, and I've put the brooches on. So I talked I about love that your brooches, that especially that that Chanel one. I thought it says Pow or something, that like one? that red one. Yeah, I love that one. Even yeah. that face is so cool. Oh my goodness! So I've put. I really can't figure out. I don't normally film on this, so I don't know where the camera is. Um, yeah, these are. I think they're pretty funky, and I think they just add something to the bag yeah. and just make it a bit quirky. So that has been being used quite a bit because I because I can fit nappies and wipes in it welcome yeah. to my real life it's very glamorous so they that's been coming a lot of places so that's the newest that has been opened and there's a few hidden confessions that I'm not going to think about just yet we'll find out when you're ready you yeah. know when I saw your unboxing of this denim bag it literally it kind of sparked in my head too i was like oh my gosh instead of the 22 bag which i know a lot of you already know what happened to my 22 bag i should get this some this one if i could find it somehow like if i could find it somewhere and this i think is... it came in it's this color but i think it came there's a purple version and i and think the green. there was a green version and... there was the green i oh, yeah. actually really the gray like i think bag. in green and the gray. I think um, 408 California was actually selling her green recently yeah. on Instagram, oh. wasn't she? Um, but it's really easy to use. And this is probably my version of, say, the 22 bag or yeah. Jumbo or something because it's that bit bigger, fit a bit more in, but easier to use. I feel like this is better than the Jumbo. The Jumbo is very structured and it's very bulky. Um, so, yeah, exactly. Uh living lux with meredith pink came in pink purple green, green and black the black is kind oh, of like gray black oh it's the like gray it's like gray. a denim gray isn't it it's like oh, a yeah i think yeah. so i think i'm kind of like yeah. a grayish um denim it's pretty oh my goodness thank you i remember wow. seeing um 48 california 48 is that 40, 40, 40, 40 something? It's 408, California 408. She used to have a YouTube channel because oh, I remember watching her unbox yeah, the green yeah. one, actually. Um, yeah. And I think she unboxed that not long before she stopped her channel, but she's still on Instagram. But I think she was selling it quite recently. She was. And I was quite surprised because um, it's really, really popular. And I remember she, mm. she liked it. But I, I was like, oh, should I buy that bag from her? But I think she was only selling local in the, in the states yeah, yeah 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 but uh it's a good bag yeah wait uh, i'm sure it's already sold i do no. still see your bag uh not your size but i do still see your bag from time to time in my boutique like it just comes in here and there like or maybe they just well, still the, have a stock i think it's somewhere. a few years ago but the person i bought that from um it was in i think selfridge's do you oh. want to take that over the, over there? Because we can all hear Coco. Aww. Um, <laughs> I think it was in Selfridges maybe only not that long ago. I think they'd maybe brought out some of the back stock and the person I got it from got it quite recently, I think. So they might still have some of them about somewhere. And I think, yeah, I think the CC Spy Laura has it. I think she got it quite recently as well. So I think there's maybe some hidden in cupboards somewhere yeah. that could be. Out. yeah 
I, I I believe so. I I have seen it myself in my in even in my store, but only the small size, uh, which of the course small was I, small, wasn't it? It was it was smaller than the normal mini, I think, from what I remember. Um, it was very small. It, okay. Yeah, it kind of looked more square than anything, mm. which I didn't need another mini bag <laughs> to be honest. But although yeah. I watched your um I watched your handbag collection yesterday oh. and it has changed so much. Yes, it has. It really, really has. I was it, it took me, and it wasn't even that long, but because the youngest is sick, I think it took me about three times to get through through the whole thing. <laughs> but I was really I a lot. changed so so much, and there's so much more black than there used to be. I know. I need to add more color. I'm so inspired right now after seeing, especially like every time I see either your thumbnails or whatever you unbox or just behind on your on your wall, I could see all the colors. I'm like, oh, especially because they're all fuchsia, pink and red. Like that's my favorite color on top of that. Also something I'm impulsive with though, because I would get asked quite a lot about, do you really need that many fuchsia bags? Mm. Or do you really need that many bags that are the same color? I can see Meredith in the comments. Mel Meredith will support me on this. Um, you know, there are a lot of bags there that are very similar in color and you are sometimes going, hmm, which one out of these? And then, but I tried buying, I have bought neutral bags thinking I need something a bit more neutral for when I decide I'm going to be slightly more elegant for the day, which doesn't happen very often. But I, I generally never use them. And they, they sit and it's, I just get drawn back to the color and they mm. don't really get used all that much. And it's, right. I think I just have to accept that it's always going to be color. I think a couple of black bags for me is a good idea because you need a black bag every so often. But even when I have a few black bags, like the Chanel bucket bag that we both have that I love the look of, but never use. Right. I think part of the problem is it's black. And when I need a black bag, that's I would generally use the 19 because I find it a bit easier to use. And so I think that's, that's as much as it might seem duplicitous to some to have so many fuchsia bags or so many bright bags, but it's what I generally use and the neutrals generally get left sitting on the shelf. So what you said is exactly how I feel about black bags. Yeah. Uh, like I That's love the idea of having a super colorful collection. But at the end of the day, whenever I reach for something, I might reach for that color or whatever. But I would start putting things in it and then I'd be like, oh, okay, now I should switch back to the black one. I don't know what it is, but for me, it's easier to style a colorful outfit with a black bag than the other way around. So, mm. yeah, and I think it's what works for you. You know, people mm. are very quick to be, oh, why have you got another pink bag? Or like, I watched Jamie on YouTube, Lux Petit, who has a lot of neutral bags, and I'm sure she gets the same, but it's what works for her. Or if black bags are what works with for you, these are so much money. Yeah. Why, you know, you need to buy. And it took me a while to probably get to the point of knowing what actually works for me and not to buy what I thought I should buy. But now that I've kind of got there, I I know a bit more. I've made some expensive mistakes along yeah. the way. I think we probably all mm. have. But it takes a while, I think, to figure out what it is works for you and not and just to kind of drown out the noise and buy what's yeah. what works for you and not worry about what everybody else thinks should be in, in your handbag shelf. Yeah, totally. Totally. I, I think black doesn't work for me. Like I I have decided not decided. I think when I got my black Birkin. Mm-hmm. I was so excited because black is like the most neutral like for you, right, Amy? Yeah. Um, it's just the color that goes. But I realized that I'm, maybe it's the weather here. Yeah. I don't see myself picking up a black bag. Though oh, okay. there's always an occasion for some black bags. But I, don't, I wouldn't see my collection as big as yours, like so many black bags. But I haven't found the color. I haven't found, like you found your pinks mm. and reds. You found your black. I haven't actually found my color. I think my color would probably be like beige, maybe beige and browns. I, I seem to pull those colors more. But yeah, maybe I'll have to make a few more expensive mistakes <laughs> before I find out. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. Done that. Yeah, and I yeah. still think that we will keep making them here and there oh, anyway. There's so many that I convince myself well, and it might be the right color, but it's just not the right type of bag. Or, yeah. uh, or I really love it, and I convince myself that it's going to work, and then it's still on the shelf, and yeah. it doesn't work. But 
know, it's, it would be great to be perfect and to know exactly what's going to always work, but we're only human at the end of the day. And some things I think you don't know until you bring them home. And I yeah. know that people sometimes you can get a bit of criticism about, oh, you bought that and now you've sold it. And yeah. why did you? Because there are some things you just genuinely don't know until you bring home and try to use. And as you said, Amy, you put your stuff in and then you realize this this doesn't work as well as that does or yeah and it, it's only when it's there that, that you yeah. figure out this is just not working for me I've had a few bags like that that I thought would have been perfect I thought they were going to be great and it just didn't work for one reason or another yeah yeah so and even talking. I totally agree and even like some bags that you know they remained in my collection for a long time but I actually hardly used them so mm -hmm. after a while uh, I when I did get rid of them people are very shocked they're like oh my gosh you had this bag it was so beautiful I've always loved it how come I don't see it anymore <laughs> especially this most recent video which of course I will get into the reasons in a later video but like that's also something that people don't know when, mm -hmm. you know, I, especially when you have a, a big enough collection to rotate the bags, of course, I love them all. I, I love them enough to buy them in the first place. But does that mean that every single bag gets used equally? Of course not. Some of them really are seldomly used hmm. and it is just what it is. Mm. Um, so I'm going to think, I'm going to just guess that your most recent denim pink jumbo is one of your best luxury purchases. Is it? I, Can you I tell us your best that. and worst luxury purchases, actually? <laughs> I haven't had it that long, um, but so far, it's really, really usable. And, and somebody that um, when I unboxed it in the comments was laughing that, that this is a diaper bag. But it's it's because I have so many mini bags and the never full I use every day for work, but I do not like unpacking that bag at yeah. the weekend mm. and all the work stuff out and then put because I will invariably go back to work on Monday and there'll be a cable missing or there'll be a fob missing or there'll mm. be something missing. And it's so big as well that I find when I take it at the weekend, even if we put some of the, the boys stuff in it and some nappies or whatever, which is very glamorous. And then as we go, my husband will put his keys in and the wallet will go in and the bottle of water will go in. And, and by the end of the day, my shoulders broke and you can hardly move. So I don't <laughs> like unboxing it or unboxing, unboxing on the brain. I don't like unpacking it at the weekend, taking everything out and taking it out. So I needed something that was a bit bigger. I had been using the 19, but it's I have the smallest 19 and it's actually not that big if you mm. need to put in it wipes and nappies and bits and pieces so yeah. that one's perfect because I was able when I'm with the, the boys I have nappies wipes in it I can get a juice in it I can get all sorts in it or if they're not there my agenda fits in it which apart from the mm -hmm. never fill it doesn't fit in any of the rest mm -hmm. of them so I have been able to use it quite a bit and it has been now I haven't used it cross body it's quite long cross body and I haven't bought the wee clips but I've just been using it on my shoulder and it has been working really well another one of my best purchases people are fed up hearing about has to be the Neverfill because I think it's just yeah. such a usable bag and then I think probably discovering the Chanel mini because mm. mini bags just work for me and yeah. I remember when I one of the mistakes I made and I remember doing this cat you did a video ages ago about if you had a time machine and, and what you learned and what you would change and one of the things took me a while to learn was I used to think I had to when you were spending this sort of money, I had to buy proper handbags. But, and that, so they were bigger and, and looked like grown up proper handbags. And then I never really used them. And I used to think, well, a small pouch bag or a small kind of crossbody, you wouldn't spend this type of money on. And it took me a while to realize, well, you spend this type of money on what you're going to use. So discovering the Chanel mini or any type of mini bag was probably one of my best like I discovered the wheel, <laughs> one of my best discoveries because it really works for me and it's just mm. so easy to wear and it's, it's so usable, I think. Because I don't carry, apart from work, and I don't carry a huge amount because generally if you take the child stuff separately, my own personal stuff, I don't carry that much whenever I'm going out or shopping or out and about. So what's your worst of everything? So you had your best. I bought, I, I, <laughs> 
I bought, we were in San Francisco and we were in the Louis Vuitton there and I was having a great time, really good service in there. And I ended up buying, I had the Brea in the small size, which was already yeah. quite structured and I didn't use it very much, the smaller one, but they had the bigger Brea, the MM in oh, the, I think the it was called Rose Indian. Is that what they used to call that color? It was a beautiful, beautiful pink color shock, funny enough. And it had fascetta around the top. And I, I saw the color and I didn't look at anything else, anything else. And there was probably a whole store full of bags that would have worked better. But I bought it and I bought the, it didn't come with the crossbody strap because it was far too big and structured a bag to wear crossbody. So I bought the crossbody strap as well. And I bought a bag charm for it, which I don't know why I did that because I don't really use bag charms. I just got caught up in the moment and it was a, one of the metal ones and it banged against the bag and it drove me nuts. And I, I think I wore the bag once for about 20 minutes and I realized this bag drives me nuts. It's far too strong. Far too big. And it was I, colored bags. You need to be really careful if you're buying and selling because unless somebody wants that specific color, you're going to lose a lot of money on them unless they're the unicorns. You know, if you, I know Meredith just got the emerald green recently or the rose gold or the pearl bag, you know, unless it's one of the unicorns that everybody wants, colored bags you'll generally use, lose more money on because not everybody's in the color and not everybody wants that color. So for a bag I'd worn in about 20 minutes, I lost a fortune. I then had to buy the cross body strap because that was never going to work. I sold the charm because it drove me nuts. So it was just a complete disaster. And it kind of, I like to buy things when I'm away. And I know some people on videos of things not to buy would say like, don't buy souvenirs when you're away. But I like to do that. I, I like to have things where I've been. So it felt like a real mistake and a real worst purchase because it was everything we'd bought in San Francisco then didn't work. And I would have loved to have something from that trip because it was um. a great trip. And I'm, quite a sentimental Sally so I would have if I had just thought it through but I'm so impulsive I saw the color and went "Ooh, that'll do <laughs> is fuchsia your favorite color yeah ah uh, that's so Where, that explains all the handbags in fuchsia you look behind us the chair I'm sitting on <laughs> oh wow this color nice yeah so cool yeah oh even your pillow yeah so besides fuchsia do you have Sorry? another favorite? Besides fuchsia as a color, what is your other favorite? Do you have another favorite color? I like I like dual tones. So any sort of mm. strong dual toned color. I like tails and purples mm. and the I think is it malachite is the color in Hermes. Mm. Those sorts of the colors and greens. purples. Yeah, real dual tones are just that's me done for. I would mm. spend silly amounts of money, and generally bright colors. Like I, I just mm. like bright colors. They, they make me smile. Love it. Since you're talking about the colors, and we were just talking about the Birkin, let's go mm -hmm. into that question, right? Let's see. How do you feel about your pre-love Hermes rose purpuri Birkin that you have? Oh, it's so nice. Would you buy really all of it? I really need to figure out where the camera is in? on this thing. This one. <sighs> Yeah, I have no regrets Lovely. about buying this pre-loved at all. Um, I have no patience in most things in life. I'm not a very patient person, which is not always my best quality. Uh, sometimes it's my worst quality. But I knew on this exactly what I wanted. I knew that I wanted this exact shade. I wanted this size. I wanted this leather. I wanted this hardware. And I am not... Hmm, I'm not great at if they had offered me even a slight variation of that. I didn't want a variation of it. I wanted exactly that. And my essay in Hermes, and I say that loosely because I don't have a huge Hermes profile or shopping or anything, but the, the essay that I do have in, in Hermes, who's lovely, had been quite honest and said, this colour isn't even always made. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been made in a few years, I think. I'm sure there's people that are more up to date with Hermes that can probably give more detail, but I think it was last made 18, 2018, 2019, maybe. There was then talk on Instagram, I think this year, that it was maybe coming back, but I don't know if it did. So she was quite honest with me and said I don't know if I'll ever be able to get you that bag in the exact color and I just 
this is what I wanted, so this is what I was buying. And I am not also great at buying things. I Not even not great. I won't buy things that I don't want just to build up the Hermes spend. I think mm-hmm. Hermes works. Like, Amy, when you got your Birkin, the th- mm-hmm. I think Hermes works because what you buy, you actually love and you enjoy. Like, I, I have the Hermes blanket sitting behind me, so I mm-hmm. will buy things from Hermes that I genuinely like. But there's not... I don't know if there's enough of things in Hermes right. that I genuinely like to get this bag or to get, like I have a wish list in Hermes for the mini Kelly, which I don't know if is ever going to happen. Mm-hmm. But I certainly don't think there would be enough in Hermes I would want to buy that would get me both of those bags. Yeah. So when it came to this one, because the mini Kelly is, cr- like this not saying this was inexpensive, but the mini Kelly on the resale market is not it's so, yeah. so expensive I just was not doing that so I thought I would buy this one in exactly the specs that I wanted and if the mini Kelly comes from Hermes great and if it doesn't it doesn't it's actually really smart that you ended up buying this bag this exact combination pre love because um not that this co- this color honestly when I first spoke about a dream MS bag. This was exactly the same bag that I spoke about. Everyone remembers that. And when I first when I got my black Birkin, some people were still asking me, but I thought you wanted hose pool. And I'm like, well, yeah, I did. But after a while and getting into the game and everything, and I also I still realized, I still knew that black always still worked for me best as a first bag. Mm. So mm. Uh, for me, it made sense what I did. But I think for you, it is so much smarter that you got it pre-love because colors actually sell for a lot less. Yeah. And as long as it's in perfect condition, it came from a reputable s- source and everything, it actually was better, would have been better for you to get it pre-loved, especially because this color was not made um, this current year or yeah. this past year. It anyway. cost me a lot more to get what you guys have. So to mm. get like either of your black ones or to get a gold yeah. or to get some of the other really popular colors, it would have cost a lot more exactly. on the resale market because mm. they're obviously more sought after and everybody generally will look for a neutral. Yeah. It was yeah. obviously still above retail, but yes. it wasn't as bad as those blacks or golds or neutrals were. And when I, I looked at the price of it compared to what the retail was with the extra if I had went and spent that in Hermes, I am pretty certain I still wouldn't have had a bag mm-hmm. because it wasn't a, it wasn't, no, I'm not going to say it was a lot. Obviously, it was a lot to pay above a bag, but it wasn't a huge amount of money as a pre spend. Yeah. Now, they, they tell yeah. me here in, in Ireland and the UK that pre spends doesn't matter and it's just about your wish list. I don't know. Right. But if, the amount extra, I thought I could go and buy that on. It wouldn't have bought you very much. Like, it wouldn't buy you very much. And you know, right. things, and that bag still may not come or may never come. There's no guarantee. And my personality of being impulsive <laughs> and not having a huge amount of patience, that just wasn't going to work for me, to be quite honest. Now, the mini Kelly, I will, because the resale price, I think that's yeah. a different ball game because the mm. resale is so expensive like I have seen mini Kelly's even in bright colors because I think when they're so small and mini people are more open to bright colors right the the very popular ones like the blacks and the golds I have seen at close to 30,000 pounds sterling yeah and I think it's yeah that's crazy thousand sterling to buy and I've the bright colors I have seen I think the 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 most inexpensive I've seen is about 20,000 pounds sterling like I'm just not doing that yeah if it never comes on um, from our maze, then it never comes. But I'm not I'm not spending that sort of money on Mini Kelly. I'm just not. Totally That's, agree. So yeah, you chose yeah. the Birkin 25 in this color. Still the right decision? Why 25? I, I just don't really use big bags. And, mm. apart, and, and when I say that, I get a few people. I say that in videos and people, oh, but the Neverfill. The Neverfill is, is my work bag. I right. use it for that specific reason. I use it for work. I use it for travel. And that's why it gets so much use. But in everyday normal life, I just don't use big bags. And if I had bought 
the because I spoke to Connor from the closet about it because he's a lot more knowledgeable than I am in Hermes and he had kind of said to me like don't rule out the bigger sizes and consider the the bigger size and and it'll be but it's I don't use them and I don't I don't think I would have really used them. I'm five foot one and I, the, the 25 just works for me. And I've taken it shopping and I, I, I had a picture on my Instagram with it filled with my shopping and there's shampoo bottles and all in it. And I had a few people, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> out of the Birkin. But I just banged it all in. And I think for a bigger one, I just don't think I would have used very much. Yeah. Yeah. If you, I mean, you like smaller bags anyway. Yeah. You're, you said that the mini Chanel rectangular works for you. So, yeah, it's the Birkin 25 is like a slightly bigger version of that. It's like a speedy 25. It's not that big. Yeah. And, and it's, it's obviously it's handheld. So, it, the bigger versions, like, like I have the Capucines in the BB and in the mini, and I will use the mini much, much more than the BB because the, the BB is only, and even the BB used to be the smallest size, so it's not an overly big bag, but to me it feels big, especially as a hand carry bag. I just don't use them as much. So the 25 for me was the perfect size. It was probably the only size. I don't mm. know if I would ever go for a bigger, maybe for work, but do I, I, I'm not sure i want to spend that sort of money for a work bag because i like i showed you the never fill earlier i'm not careful in work yeah. and it gets put on the floor and kicked under the desk and, and i'm not sure i want to do that with a with with a birkin i always ask this question because we always get these same questions over and over from different people of course but a lot of people are still either wondering or maybe thinking for us that you know the 30 is really not that big and it's a much better size you can wear on the crook of your arm so I always ask everybody like so why did you pick the 25 or why did you pick the 30 like I want to know their reasons so whatever you said is exactly how I feel too like I I mean, I'm known for loving my mini bags. That's the main. Well, Connor was saying to me, "What about the 30? Because it's mm -hmm. it's a great bag and it's more usable." And yeah, for me, I just it's just what I use, and yeah. that's one of the things I suppose I've learned from buying handbags for so long. I made mistakes buying the bag that I thought I should have bought, or buying mm. the bigger version because it felt like a proper handbag, or it felt like it justified the price better. But then when you put it into your own lifestyle, I never actually used it. So it might have, in theory, justified the price better, but not when it sits on a shelf. Yeah. Whereas the 25, I put my card holder in, phone, keys, headphones, maybe a lip prop. That's about it. I don't, mm -hmm. Unless it's work or the, or the boys, I don't carry very much. I don't like to have you know, much to have to be lugging about if I'm going out or shopping. So it works for me. And I think that when they're that sort of money... You, you probably need to figure out what works for you before you mm. commit to that sort of money. Now, obviously, with Hermes, the thing is, if you were to get one from the store and it doesn't work, you're always going to be able to sell it. But you're going to have a difficult time then tracking down the one that you do want. And, and it's going to take you time to find it. I see Corinne, mm. Corinne is in the uh, comment box. And um, when I unboxed the that Birkin, I know that she then decided to do the same thing. She then went and got hers pre-loved pretty much for the same reasons to get the exact version that she wanted. And she's in the comments there, but the last I spoke to her, I know that she didn't regret that decision either. And it had, but it was a colored bag as well. So um, that worked for her. Whereas definitely if you're trying to buy one of the neutrals, they're a lot more expensive than on the resale market to get. And that might I don't know if I'd have done it if I'd have been looking for a black or a gold because there's so much money then to buy. Yeah. So we have the same question, but this uh, viewer, our Luxie, for the love of bags, she has the same questions. Love Amelia's collection, so unique. What is your favorite brand or what are your other favorite brands? Or actually, what are your favorite brands? Mm hmm Probably Louis Vuitton. I don't think that comes as, as any surprise. That was my first kind of luxury, walk into luxury. And I think one of the reasons they have stayed, well, there's a few reasons why they've stayed one of my luxury brands. And I know at times they get a bit of, you know, it's repetitive or the monogram. Oh, don't start me on the word basic. I can't with that. Um, you know, people, oh. um, but I, I don't agree with any of that. I think that, they are 
a luxury house, I still love their monogram. Like if the Birkin and the Neverfull were both to disappear and I was told that I could only replace one of them, I'm replacing the Neverfull above the Birkin because it's so really yeah, every day of the week. Doesn't without even consideration. And Louis Vuitton for me was also one of the houses that I first felt comfortable in. Mm. And I, when I started going into luxury stores, because I don't come from money and I don't come from a world where you went into those stores, I used to feel very, very uncomfortable. And I used to feel very awkward and like I didn't belong in them. And we all know that at times the staff can make you feel in a certain way or I would have just felt like I shouldn't be there. And I have a certain nervous tell that I would find myself doing when I was in those stores. And I think Louis Vuitton was one of the first where I felt really comfortable. I'm I'm lucky in Dublin because the staff in Dublin are fab. But even when I was in like New York or San Francisco or somewhere, I, I always find that in Louis Vuitton, I felt more comfortable and I thought the staff were just a bit more welcoming than say Chanel. So mm-hmm. they definitely are one of my favorite brands for that reason. I also love the monogram. I love their, I, like, I love the Capri scenes. I love the Petite Mal. I am obsessed with So Louis Vuitton, definitely. Chanel, because I love the bags. It took me longer to get into Chanel for one, the cost obviously, but two, also going into the store. And I just, it, I, some experiences of just feeling so uncomfortable and feeling not good enough to be in a store. Now that's crazy because you're going into a store where people are selling you things, you have the money, they're very expensive, but you're made to feel as if you're not good enough to shop in that store. And it took me a while. And I think it's easier as you get older to just, feel comfortable in those places. And again, Dublin, the the stores in Dublin are very small and the staff I find in them are are, are really good because they're just very down to earth. And I started going into Chanel in Dublin, probably that helped break down the sort of barrier about it. But I do love their bags and I do love their costume jewellery as well. And I love their shoes. I love some of their trainers. I'm yet to get too much Chanel ready to wear that I think works for me. I was insistent I was trying on Chanel tweed jackets and I looked like a granny in all of them it looked awful and um, I've also got recently a bit into Dior I got the mini lady no the small lady Dior in the bright I didn't actually bring it up but in the bright pink color with the bright iridescent type hardware the hardware is multicolored, and I think that bag's pretty fab and I like a lot of Dior's costume jewelry I haven't got as much into Dior as Louis Vuitton and Chanel yet but um, I don't know if there's as many of their bag styles that call me as in the other brands. But I would say Louis Vuitton and Chanel are up there. Mm. So Hermes is not up there. <laughs> uh, Hermes is for, this is what I'm saying about, I don't think that the journey would really work right. for me because there's, more limited things in Hermes that I would buy. I love their costume mm. jewelry. Like I have a lot of their bracelets. I really like their, what other people would say not to buy, but I love their H bracelets. And I love the the, yeah. I've, the, the 24 version, I think of the CBC one. I have yeah. that in quite a few colors and I really love those. And I love the mini Kelly, the Birkin. I love some of the, some of the trainers I really like. And there's some of their fine jewelry I really like, but there's not a huge broad spectrum in Hermes and I think that's a problem if you're going to be looking to try and get one of the very popular bags I think like mm. you guys both, I think both of your channels is probably one of the first channels I ever saw the ready to wear in Hermes being worn in a, wear, a way that I actually thought was wearable mm. and you, you guys both have this enjoy more of the footwear and the Amy you've the jewelry and Kat I know you've the clothes and I think you probably need to love it that much if you're going to be on the journey to be getting one of the, the journey to be getting yeah. one of the bags. It kind of sucks you in though. And in, in a, in a good way, not in a bad way, because first I think all of us want to go and start the journey because of the bags. But I mean, I'm, I'm speaking from my own experience is that, yeah, I still want the bags. Cause I, I mean, any, whether it's LV Chanel and all, I, I'm always eyeing the bags, but I think after doing it for, uh, two years is it two years has it been two years about two years i actually do like 
I'm starting to like other things from them as well. So the shoes, I really enjoy. I well, I love their makeup, like which is so stupid to buy their makeup because it's so <laughs> crazy expensive. But uh, yeah, you gotta kind of find the stuff. It's definitely not like um, like say uh, LV where it's you can actually explore more of just the leather goods, like the, or the canvas mm -hmm. goods where you can buy the SLGs, uh, you can buy you know, all kinds of bags. That is kind of limited. In, in Hermes, it's slightly more, I feel like it's more of like a lifestyle where they want to really make sure that it's not just the bags that you want to go after the brand. It's, it's all encompassing, even like the blanket that you have at the back. Mm -hmm. uh, even now, I'm looking at my little cups. It's, it's so like, look at your cup, Amy. It's so... <laughs> So I don't know. Uh, that's why I say it sucks you in. Because once you start holding a little bit, you're like, ooh. But I I'm think wearing is my, isn't, wearing my foundation today. I, but I think isn't that what they want? I, I think yeah. they want the bags to be going to people that enjoy the whole package. Like I do yeah. love their homewares. I have on my desk over there is the little tiger tray as well. I really like their homewares. Yeah. But I am a bit of a nerd when it comes to like homewares and stationery and stuff. But I think they want that. I think they want yeah. people that mm. that love love the brand for all of the brand and want to be in the you know the makeup, the homewares, the clothes, the jewelry to be then given the bag. So as the bag complements all yes. of the rest yes. of the lifestyle. And I think I, that's ideal. Like that's yeah. probably what Hermes wants to do. Is ideal mm. ideally, okay, get the people to be all encompassing. It's a lifestyle. You love it. The only issue is they don't have enough bags to go around. Yeah. which causes this chase and the satisfaction yeah. because you actually really love the brand. You're like, I like your shoes. I like this. But every time you go in, it's you can't get the bag and then there's no shoes. So it, it back in a way, it backfires a little bit because you're trying to love the brand as a whole or you're actually loving it already. But it's not, it's not able to fulfill you fast enough. <laughs> And it's I not even about being greedy, right? It's like everything is just, yeah, no shoes, no orans, nothing. Oh my I think god! That's one of the problems I had when I started looking at Hermes in Dublin. The boutique in Dublin's tiny; like it's it's mm -hmm. a very very small concession, and no, no matter like if uh, shoes, bracelets, there, there's so little stock. And yeah. I would have been asking for things that probably aren't that popular, you know, a certain color of a bracelet or the ring that I had tried to get or certain trainers. And they just, they never had any of the stock or the, and, and she'd have to say, come back months later. I haven't forgotten, but they're not there. So it's very hard mm. to, to do what, you know, if you want, if, if you're trying to buy a bit of everything and it's not there. And I think stock's probably, it's in everybody's way, doesn't it? Stock is definitely an issue. And that's something that I kind of learned the hard way because unlike the other brands where you are able to text your essay in advance and tell them this is what I would like mm. and they try to get it for you if they can. Yeah. Hermes is the other way around. It's, it's more about going into the store and experience what they have in stock, which is, you know, after, after I think a, two or three visits, I realized that it was pointless for me to text my essay what my wish is. Okay. Yeah. It was easier for me to just show up. Like from time to time, I just show up and I just browse whatever they have. Like if I was thinking of buying shoes, I'll just see what shoes they have. If I was thinking okay. of buying, looking at their ready to wear, which my essay, um, you know, knowing that I do buy ready to wear will tell me that, oh, the new collection has launched. Would you like to come in this week? So I would literally just go there without telling him what I wanted in the first place, because I will be pointless. They can't put it aside anyway. Yep. So you would just show up and buy what they have. So it's sort of lifestyle is really the word like you. You can't really just pick and buy that. You just go and you spend time you they they want that too like my my essay was explaining to me that that's actually their goal is for clients mm. to experience the store not to just text someone so that you can put that aside like that doesn't feel very luxury to like that's not the sort of like the representation of how they want 
the experience to be. So in a sense, it's good and bad. Uh, it's bad because you can't get exactly what you think you want. Um, and at the end of the day, you just have to buy what they have, which is not always what you wanted. Um, so it's it's a bit of a learning curve and it's a bit yeah. of a, uh, it wouldn't work for everyone. Like if you don't have that patience, it definitely would not work. That, that's why I have no regrets about buying the Birkin pre-loved in exact like that would not work for me I can tell you not yeah yet. I'm not I, I if if I like I knew exactly what I wanted with that and if I go in and that's maybe why I wouldn't get anywhere with Hermes because when I'm looking for specific things if it's not that specific thing yeah I'm probably not going to shop what they have and take an alternative and my patience levels aren't huge <laughs> so it's it's probably not it, it going to work for me in in the long run and I know that some people had said when I did get the Birkin pre-loved about the cost and the extra money but it made sense for me and I appreciate not everybody's going to be in that position but rather than going and shopping what they have and and not getting exactly the pieces even that of Hermes that I wanted it's probably not I probably I'm not the best candidate for that mm. It does train patience for sure. Uh, yeah. and my husband would be telling me to get on that train and, and go and do yeah, that. Yeah, I was thinking, I was like, aren't, you, aren't you gonna? You're saying that you want to train your impulsiveness, so maybe, maybe mm -hmm. test this, test this Hermes train out and <laughs> use your mini Kelly as your training. Plus, uh, like, as your training with, train, yeah. <laughs> now, with the mini Kelly, I think it's it's like everyone's game is this is similar. I mean, Dublin being the small store might have less stock. We have only one store here. It's not a. I don't think it's that small of a store, but at the same time, just there's just so much demand here that is impossible. Mm -hmm. So, um, I I would I would think that for mini Kellys, it would be about the same for everyone. <laughs> I think they're so hard to get now with um yeah, it, now it, too yeah it seems to be no matter who be it on on youtube or anybody that you speak to that's into luxury handbags the mini kelly seems to be next to impossible but that ties in exactly why they can charge such high resale for them you know and mm -hmm. i suppose sometimes when you see that the amount of them on the resale that are brand new you kind of wonder who is getting them from the store but yes. there's, I think there's some of them I've seen are, are four or five times what the retail is and that's just a huge 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 markup and I suppose if you're very very wealthy and that's the bag that you want and it it's it doesn't that amount of money doesn't maybe mean or have the same value as it would if you have lesser money but like I know I couldn't justify mm -hmm. spending the price of the mini Kelly on the resale market. The, the br very bright ones that I've seen are kind of in and around between 20 to 25,000 sterling. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's just not going to happen. Yeah. I don't know if, if, if there's many arguments that my husband could be responsible for that would get over <laughs> me bringing one of those home at that price. He would probably have a small fit. <laughs> I wouldn't blame him. <laughs> that, I don't know. You know, even it, I don't even think I myself could get my head around yeah. it. It's just such an amount of money for a mini bag. And I love mini bags, but it's a lot of money. Yeah. I don't think we're that desperate anyway. Not, not, yeah, yet. no, that's too much. Maybe we this... win the lottery, maybe. Ah, <laughs> uh, if, if, any, if, if only, right? We, it's funny. Didn't somebody because... just win the Powerball in the United States for two billion dollars? I, I think I read that some, yeah, like a it's... like last week, somebody won the two billion dollar Powerball jackpot. I am very <laughs> disappointed so to tell you that it was not me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in Canada, our our jackpots are not this big. I think the biggest yeah. one we've had, and it lasted several several weeks, I think over a month, where nobody won the grand prize to the point where it was 70, um, it was 70 million every, every jackpot plus extra, you know, how they have like the extra 1 millions mm -hmm. because they keep mm -hmm. adding up every week and nobody has won. It's the Lotto Max. 
And so it was so funny because I think my DHL, my DHL guy knows me so well because I get so much DHL delivered to me that he's sort of become not a friend, but like we chat every time he delivers my stuff. And he was like, one time he asked me, he's like, oh, did you buy the Lotto Max? I said, no, but... And then he starts telling me, it's like, oh, it's 70 million. It's been six weeks. Nobody's won it. Mm -hmm. I've been buying for like, I don't know. I've spent already $100 over the weeks and da -da 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 -da. And then it's so funny. Like, we just started talking about this. And then one time he even said, oh, if I win, I'll I'll give you 100000 so you can go on a nice vacation. I'm like, oh, wow, you're so <laughs> kind. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh oh, like so everyone's cute. so desperate like i mean desperate as in like you know it's fun it's fun to talk about it, like to, to dream and to dream about it yeah, yeah to dream about it and the word it's not worse but like i think because he um you know he didn't experience it but his colleague actually won and it was his colleague so he his wow. colleague quit recently so um that is probably why <laughs> wow he's even more obsessed or not obsessed like an, it's an it's a really cute and uh like, kind of like dreamy way right like he's very down to earth and a very nice person obviously otherwise i wouldn't be chatting with him every time he comes over so um but it's just so funny it's my dhl delivery guy <laughs> tells you about the <laughs> when my son asks me for something that's crazy because he's six and you know he asks for crazy things at times and uh -huh. he'll say that he wants something. my answer to him will always be, but I want, I want him in the lottery and that's not happening. And he's going, what is the lot? So I have images of him going into school now going, let's talk about the lottery. What's the lottery? <laughs> Read mommy's obsessed with winning the lottery. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. <laughs> so we have this very uh, fun question from Sarah. I also have two kids, similar age, four and six. Have you ever had a disaster with taking your kids out with your bags? My kids are banned from using felt tips when we are out. What is felt tips? Felt pens, pens, like marker pens. Like marker oh, pens. my goodness. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I don't think so. But I don't wear, that's why the multi pochette gets a huge amount of use by mm. me. And it's probably not one of my favorite bags aesthetically but it's really easy to use with the boys it's light and it's canvas so it's it's not that it's completely damage free destruction free but it's it's gonna stand up to them a lot more than some of say like the chanel lambskin or something so whenever we're out with them that's generally i generally will be taking bags that are going to take a bit more three and six year old boy activity than what some of the other bags will be we've have had disasters though like on the we got a renovation done at the back of our house and there's all new woodwork in and on the skirting board which is really really deep skirting board my oldest son's name is written in red crayon on the skirting board because why would you not and then there's other like so we have had them with their markers and pens drawing on things so I'm, I don't, whenever they're out and we're with them, I probably have one of the canvas bags and not one of the other bags because you just, you just never know what they're going to get up to. I, that, that's a really good bag for errands. So, and, and, and small enough that it, it's hard for anybody to really damage it including kids. yeah like i now i've used this one with the, the one we're talking about like i've used that one with the um mm. the boys, but i'm i try to keep them away but yeah. you know it's it's i suppose it's one of those risks whenever they're that age because they just yeah. they're crazy I, no they and they're just curious because i i remember when my nephew was only two or maybe he was only one one year old and like nine months and he was sitting on our couch and he wanted to touch that little fur ball on my on my bag it was a charm and at the time it was the palm springs mini that i had and so i let him touch it because you know he's my nephew he's my favorite kid in the world and 
eventually just grabbed the whole thing and I I just let him but then you know his mom my sister-in-law would be like no 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 <laughs> I'm like no it's okay it's canvas it's pretty indestructible blah blah, blah. and you know it's I, I trusted the canvas that much too. I, I, I honestly yeah. believe that little small LV bags that are enclosed, like they have zippers that can be closed. It's the perfect for little children. Yeah. Not for them to play, but I was okay for him to play with it because I'm that auntie. Yeah, like I, I use that bag probably more than what I would I would choose to if you were right. choosing on the look of the bag or right. how it works with what you're wearing, but it's it's because it's close to indestructible with them and it's you know you can you can if they take off, it's light. So if if yeah. they take off and they're sprinting down the road and they're definitely not listening when you're and you're going after them and it's not cumbersome or anything. So I probably use that bag a lot more than I would choose to if it was by choosing the bag that you would want to wear at that time but I suppose that's just the reality of it isn't it with with the boys they have to yeah. they have to come first yeah absolutely so okay. Amelia aside from handbags mm -hmm. are you also into other luxuries like jewelry shoes, shoes I, I know you spoke about ready to wear shoes earlier fine shoes was Christian Bouton was probably my first, before I was even into bags, uh, it was definitely shoes. Like the, the dressing room that we have downstairs where I would fill them in, whenever that was being designed and built, the designer had said she'd put these little shelves at a different point and on the sketches she'd put handbags on them and the cabinet that the bags are in was designed for shoes. That, that's why there's a there's a rejig going to happen because bags come into my life. But that was meant to be for shoes. And I remember saying to her when she was designing it, and it wasn't that long ago, I think it was about seven or eight years ago. So I had the Neverfull and maybe a couple of bags, but I remember saying to her, oh, I'm not that that interested in bags. It's, it's all about the shoes. So let's not worry too much about the bags. And the whole ca that cabinet with the lights was built for shoes. I used to be shoes on the brain and Le Boutons on the brain. I used to have a huge amount of them, but all heels. And that was probably before yeah. my wife came along. And I got the shock of my life when I realized that no people weren't all lying to me that when you have children, you just don't get the chance to wear those heels as much and you can't wear <laughs> them as much. But I used to, shoes were definitely my first love. And I had a lot of Louboutins, Jimmy Choo would have been probably the main two. I also liked Sophia Webster. Um, mm. I have a few of, of those. But I just then gradually transferred into bags. And I know bags are probably more usable and that you wear shoes and they get damaged, but they're less expensive than bags. And I will still buy shoes, but I, I will buy more flats boots trainers and I still buy heels but not as much as I used to but I really like shoes and I just like shoes generally always fit and shoes generally can make any outfit I think jewelry I I don't buy that much designer level jewelry I mm. buy most, most of my jewelry that's proper fine jewelry comes from a local jeweler here I have my ideal jewelry, which I actually love. And and I know yeah. sometimes people are suspicious when you're gifted things, but I think their diamonds are fabulous. Oh, they're fantastic. They're I'm right now. I wear their earrings probably every day. I did. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you a question, actually, but I, I wear their earrings nearly every day. I wear one of their necklaces with I do have this Louis Vuitton one that I sleep in. And then I wear one of theirs normally with it. Mm -hmm. And I and then the rest of my jewelry probably isn't fine jewelry. But you commented yesterday when I was watching your bag collection and you were showing your ideal jewelry. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. not working for me. How yours don't all tangle. Like no. I have to take I, I have to take this one on and then take the other ones all off and then put them back on because I find they're really tangled. But you were saying you're able to wear yours and lean forward kind of and they don't all yeah, so these three I haven't removed it in I mean, I only removed it to f to do the the footage where I installed this little dangly part yeah. on this necklace. But otherwise, I shower with it, I sleep with it. They don't really get tangled if you just... 
I mean, they do get tangled. Don't get me wrong. It's not that they don't get tangled, but when I wake up, they would be they would be like you know they would be like this, right? They would mm -hmm. usually be like this. Mm. Is that how you are? Yours are when you yeah, wake up? Yeah, I might not like wrap around. Real, oh, okay. So I the even one? if they do get wrapped around, I find that what I I still let them do is I just I kind of just let them come back to the front, and I try not to mess it up myself too much because when i try to do it it will wrap around even more Maybe so i let it so assuming i'm like bending that way right i let it kind of like come back because the the pendant part is the heavy part right so it will all kind of like the pendants will kind of all move back here and even though the chains are now all kind of tangled i just bring the shortest one and i I kind of bring it up so that because the shortest one is the easiest to untangle you just kind of bring it up so it doesn't touch the other two and then you do the same thing with the other two and that's how i've always done it mm -hmm. sometimes when i wake up in a rush and i have to leave i don't even untangle mm -hmm. my necklaces because they're like they, they might be a slightly tangled but like i know i can fix it within 30 seconds if i just take the time and try that because i've been been keeping one on and then taking yeah. the other ones off and on all the time because I, I was there, mm -hmm. which sometimes I didn't try it. Maybe try with two at first, not three, because yeah. I had two at first and I realized that it was so easy. And I started adding the third one, and it's fine. There was one time I I tried to like turn it, turn it, and the more I did that, the worse it was. So I realized that by not doing that and just by like just lifting it, literally just lift it they will just kind of un unravel itself from the other one it's i think that i'm easy. making it worse then because i'm trying to yeah yeah if you turn it yourself it will get worse yeah because yeah. i used to wear two as well and mm -hmm. when i go to the gym they will you know when you're moving around they start mm -hmm. to roll each other so i do kind of similar but i just put my finger between the two mm -hmm. chains and they sort of like loosen it yeah and they untangle themselves yeah okay it's easier when you just naturally let them, like literally just lift it from each other, like lift it. Yeah. I really yeah. like the, I really like the look of a stack of them. I think yeah. it looks really well. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I had to share that trick because I'm sure some people are wondering, like, how do you even, like, I always see people stack a bunch of different necklaces and I always wonder myself too, I'm like, oh, don't they have to remove it all the time? But now that I actually have three necklaces all the time, you don't have to. It's effortless. It's that easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. I do really like the Coco Crush ring. Yes. Oh, I'm wearing one. I know that I you have one. one. I, <laughs> I, I really, 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 really. And it's for I that finger think... that you have yours on, Kat. Yeah. I really, really like it. That's on my, probably on my wish list. I think it's really, really cute. It's one of the best rings that I, that mm -hmm. I bought. I mean, in my collection, because I, I love rings. Like you see my ring collection mm -hmm. is like, do you have enough fingers? No, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I do wear the Coco Crush ring so much because it's so comfortable. It's so comfortable. It's so dainty that you can use it for like stacking. You can use it on its own. You can stack it with your other rings. So, you know, it's one of the best. Lah. And the price point is still for Chanel fashion jewelry yeah. is still acceptable. Like you can, it's still, it, it's expensive because you can get something like that outside. But really the workmanship on this ring is superb. It's so well made. Yeah, that's on my list for here. I I I personally love the Coco Crush. I mean, I love all my rings, but like I feel like the Coco Crush, even though I love my um, my Kelly ring a lot too, I wear those two all the time. The Coco Crush is really, really worth it of all the yeah. luxury rings that I own. Okay. It's that's good to know because that's high on my list. Too. It's got a good weight on it as well. Mm -hmm. Even though it's so small and thin, it feels substantial. And um, yeah, it's a it's 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 really pretty to look at, even if you just wear that one ring versus yeah. the other ones. Like if I were to wear like the other ones on its own, it it still sort of misses something, like maybe a little diamond or whatever. The My fingers are short and stumpy, so I kind of oh, need yeah, rings. Totally. I kind of need rings that on their own is enough because they're so short and stumpy when I stack them. Like even my actual proper ring can 
can make them look even stumpier and shorter. So if the Cocoa mm. Crush works on its own, and I see VJ who I, I follow on Instagram as well, and who has a fab or Maze bag, it also says that she loves her Cocoa Crush rings. So that's definitely high up my high up my Yeah, list. yeah. I think and they look it. so good stacked. Like if you can get like two, mm. you don't have to buy like the um, um, you know, they have one, they have a new design where it's it's actually two thin cocoa crushes, but they sort of look like um like a, like they're sneaking in together. It's really nice. I mean, this is the most. Do you the buy base. them together or buy them as one? Is it as is it one, one piece? Ring? So mm-hmm. it's it's sort of like a curve. It's really pretty also. So go and check it out. Yeah. Yes. It's that's on my Approved. list. That's been <laughs> approved. That's been high up my list. I think it's they're lovely. So I, I I don't have I have I have longish fingers, but I have arthritis. So I kind of have like those big joints and it still looks really great. Like this yeah. is my big thing, like fat finger because of the arthritis mm-hmm. and it still looks really, really good. It's kind of that elegant ring that can mm-hmm. be its own ring on, on a hand. So totally should just I buy want- it now. <laughs> yeah. yes, I Before it gets more finger. expensive. <laughs> This finger, and I think just because it, I've tried some of them on that if they're too thick, like yeah, it makes the yeah. fingers look even smaller. But yes. when I tried it on, and I, I before that I liked the Hermes one with the little circle. Is that the CDC one that has the? It has like the oh, little the one that glue moves. hanging from it. Yeah, yeah. But they've told me that because my fingers are so big, like the size I need is huge. That it's sold out everywhere. Mm. So I, I want to think get the Coco Crush for this one. I'm going to pull a question for you. This is slightly different, but I think it's on your other channel. Mm. Jessica Lim's asking, Hi, Amelia. I know you have Amelia Talks Finance YouTube channel. What would you, what would be your top tips, advice to enjoy luxury while still being financially responsible? (laughs) Yeah, Um, let us know. I'm not financially responsible. (laughs) I yeah th- that's probably why I keep the channel separate because for some people it will overlap and they want to know about the preachy responsible finances behind it and then others just want me to leave them alone to enjoy the luxury mm-hmm. but yeah the, the other the, the finance for me is a is a, is a pretty big thing because I I suppose I the luxury is one side of it and you will, if you watch that channel, you will think <laughs> that person is out of control and spends a fortune on handbags. And there's, but there's a whole financial setup behind that. And there is actually, I have a video, I think it's maybe tomorrow's video on how to avoid buyer's remorse and, and feeling guilty. And it touches on that about how to enjoy luxury while still being financially responsible. And I do think there are things you can put in place. And I'm sorry if I get on my soapbox here. So if I do, tell me to get off it and shut up. But there are things you can put in place when you're shopping to allow whatever you're buying and spending not to interact with everything else so you can do it responsibly and guilt-free. And I definitely think for me, part of what works for that is keeping finances separate. So having all of what you need to be responsible with, so your savings, your investments, your bills, the money you need for every day, the money you need for children, all of that, keep that separate and then I keep my spending luxury money in a different account that doesn't touch any of the family finances or any of the investments or the the bills or any of that so as if I shop out of it I don't feel like I'm being irresponsible in fact I'm not being irresponsible because everything else is sorted out and that money is kept separate and I think if you have good money management behind your spending and behind your income and your outgoing I think you can very easily shop responsibly. I think the problem is that people can get into difficulties and it's everybody's own personal choice, but debt is something you can drown in. And I've been in debt before and it's all consuming and it takes over and it's hard to enjoy anything about life whenever you're in a huge amount of debt. And I don't know if I think that there's too many luxury purchases that are worth getting into that level of debt for. But I think if you have good money management behind your spending and your income and your outgoings and you know what they are I think a big problem is a lot of people if finances are a bit messy don't sit down and actively address what is their income and what is their outgoing and what are their debts and what do they have to pay but if you have all of your money management in place and you have other money that you know is free money so to speak 
that you can spend on luxury, you can do it responsibly because everything else is is, is taken care of and you're not mm. impacting on those and you're not getting into debt for them and you're not get you're not going a, over what you should be spending. And then the, then I, I think it can be responsible because I'm sure you guys get this as well. Because one of the criticisms that we get of people stumble apro- across a luxury channel, and I sometimes wonder why they're watching a luxury channel, but it's how can you spend this money on this? Or you, do you know that this needs done? Or how are you feeding your family? And why are you spending it? But, but if you are in control of your money, just because we spend a lot or but we shop a lot doesn't mean we're irresponsible. And doesn't mean that we're spending money we shouldn't be spending or doesn't mean that we're frivolous or we're people that don't have any substance because we're buying luxury fashion. There's a whole other life behind this little tiny square that you see of us talking about handbags or what we're buying on YouTube. And I think if you have all of that in place, there is no reason why your spending can't be completely enjoyed, responsible and with no guilt and no shame, regardless of how many people might try and make you feel shame about it. If you know your finances are in order and that you're spending within your own remits, there, there should be no reason for for you to feel guilty about it or for you to not be responsible. Good advice. I have to Good not advice. get talks about that because, and that that's that is why I have the the other channel because I think that there is a balance. And if you if you look at my closet channel, for example, you would think this person shops a lot, spends a lot, but there. There is a there is a balance to that, and there is another mm. side to it. And I think that um, being open about it. I think another thing is that money and ordering money and finance sometimes is taboo, and nobody talks about it. And I think if we kind of maybe address it head on and educate a bit more about it, because like I wasn't taught anything about money management at school or university or after university, but it's it's empowering. There's that. And there's also, um, you know, I, I do believe that the majority of the subscribers that often watch our videos will, will know that we are responsible with what we um, add and how we end up managing it and sometimes Mm -hmm. letting go of stuff to replace certain things. But it's like you said, just the odd person that comes on and makes an assumption about you. And there's always going to be people like that in real life as well, not mm-hmm. just on the internet. The internet is just kind of blown up and even more crazy because they don't have to show their faces. Um, and at the end of the day, I wanted to say this to that individual is that um, we are also our own worst critic a lot of times. Like, I I think what you described about, you know, when you bought your first few bags that, you know, I feel... A heart attack every time I added a Chanel bag. I was sort of more or less comfortable with LV, even though I still was very nervous and felt like I, I, I should be feeling guilty for spending that kind of money. But Chanel was just another level mm-hmm. where every time I unboxed something, I literally felt like I wanted to throw up. That's just how I felt. But obviously, it doesn't normally, you know, like these things you can hide, it doesn't translate through the camera. But and and then people misunderstand and doesn't know that you actually feel those things. Mm-hmm. Um, but that is that is that is the reality is that you know sometimes you you can afford it and as long as you are responsible about it and you go and buy it and enjoy it. Yes, you may feel guilty and that's okay to have those feelings, but don't let that stop you and don't let that. Um, prevent you from going after what you really wanted yeah because like i said we are usually our worst our own worst critic and 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 by having people kind of giving you that chatter it makes you feel even worse about it but i do think it's right what you said that the the vast majority of people that that regularly watch our videos know like they're you know they're there and they're supportive and and they they know that that you're not spending your mortgage money on yeah. handbags but it's it's just sometimes people come along and that don't know and I think you're right also about in the world outside and I think that's for a long time while a lot of us almost hide you know and, and it takes a while to feel even confident carrying your luxury bags because mm-hmm. you'll get so much judgment from it and you'll get so much people thinking what you know how are you spending that on that and I think that yeah 
We also subconsciously do it even during our reveals and unboxing videos. And I see it all the time. I see it on all my favorite YouTubers. There's always a justification why yep. this ended up being bought. Aside from you like the color, you like the style, it works for you, mm -hmm. this and that. But all these are really just for the audience to accept you buying it almost. Buying a bag. And yeah. it's, you know, I guess they are curious too. Like the true, the true viewer, the true audience and subscriber, they are actually genuinely uh, curious about the mm -hmm. reasoning sometimes. But we are also doing it for the people who are very critical and, you know, are not necessarily the nicest people out there either. So I've had comments on my unboxings with people saying, stop apologizing or, you know, mm -hmm. stop explaining or, you know, you don't need to explain. But you're right. You subconsciously are, are saying, mm -hmm. but, you know, I bought it because of it. And it's, yeah, it, it's hard. And that's even at this age. And as long as I've been buying bags, it's, it's hard to completely lose that, that you kind of feel like, you're justifying spending your own money, isn't it? <laughs> I think it's fine to still feel it because we are human and we are we are we we are brought up all differently. We we all grew up in a different circumstance. So you are what you are because yeah. of your past, but it doesn't mean that that defines you because clearly we all have evolved and made our lives better. Um but the crucial and the most rudimental part of us still stays with us, right? So I think it's okay. It's very human, but um, it's There's just a comment hard. here that I absolutely love from your friend, Clara. And she says, women need to stop bashing other women. Men never bash mm -hmm. each other when they buy a new car or a watch. And this type of criticism needs to stop. I lo preach. Love it. Preach. You know, that is so <laughs> true. That it, it is so, 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 so true. Like, that it's when if you in the workplace and a man comes in with a new Porsche or a Rolex or something, nobody bats an eyelid. But as Clara says, we will get people, normally other women, about what you're spending or putting, and and it's not. And I I don't I'm not talking about the people generally that watch our channels because I have fabulous chats with people in there. But it's people that that, that stumble across it and you kind of wonder, well, why are you watching this video? Because it's clearly not something that you want to watch but that's i think that comments that comments very true and it's usually pretty backhanded too it's like oh you're so lucky i did it. yeah. <laughs> it's sort of like backhanded too it's not so in your face sometimes too do you ever watch like, connor's oh. reels on these when connor does reels on these he has a great one where he'll say like well, like, I couldn't spend that sort of money on a bag, mm. but it's okay for you. And it's so true. So backhanded. Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, we have another uh, question also asking advice from Dale's. Dale's Addiction. What advice would you give a young professional on their first luxury purchase? Same as mm. you bring or different? <sighs> Probably not the same as mine, apart from the never feel which worked because impulsivity may be not the best thing with <laughs> these sorts of monies. I think try and figure out what works for you in non-luxury bags before you go to the luxury price. Because if you've figured out what works in your actual lifestyle and your actual wardrobe, and then you buy a designer level bag that is of the same style or shape or use that you know already works for you and the same color that you know already works for you. There's a great, much greater chance that it's going to work and it's not going to be a mistake and it's going to work in your wardrobe rather than buying maybe, because I knew when I was buying the bags after the Neverfill that small crossbody pouch type bags worked for me, but I felt but you wouldn't spend designer type money on one of those because sure, it's just a little small pouch and I bought proper handbags and then they never worked. Whereas if I had followed what I already knew worked in my wardrobe and lifestyle and what I would use, I probably would have had a lot less expensive mistakes because mm. I, I would have already knew what worked. And I think as well, don't listen to too much of what you should buy. You know, you should buy this as your first bag or you should buy that. I, I kind of think try and drown out that noise a bit because people will have opinions and are trying to be helpful, but only you know what's going to work for you. So I think maybe try and 
drown out the noise a bit of what you're being told works for you. And I think third thing I would say is if it's realistically achievable, probably try and keep going for the one that you really, really want. Because quite often I find if I maybe couldn't find it or whatever and bought something else, it, it, it doesn't scratch the edge and I still want the bag that I want in the first place. Obviously, if it's you know, not if we're talking about a mini Kelly at 25,000 sterling, because that just might not ever be achievable. But if it's something that's achievable within oh. your price range or something that's easier to get quicker. Mm. Very good advice. Okay, so I want to ask you, Amelia, is there an item, luxury item that got away? One or more. You can share all of them if you want it. Sorry, I'm Ooh. not sure if it was my internet there or yours. Could you say that again, please? Uh, it, it probably was yours. You were cutting up a little bit. Um, I oh wanted God. to ask you if there was any um, luxury item that got away. If you had to have any... Oh, many. Items that got oh, away. many. Yeah, like there's... I, I always... I have now a green or a mini Kelly and a teal. No, I don't have a mini Kelly. I want a mini Kelly. I have a Chanel <laughs> mini and a teal color. And it was, I had the classic flap in that color and I just couldn't afford it. And I can remember it really clearly. We were in Dublin. And at the time, when you think of the cost of classic flaps now, it was around about 4,300 euro. But it was the year before I think we were going to do the big renovation in the work in the house, which would have been 2018. And we just could not spend 4,300 euro on a handbag. It just wasn't possible because all the money was going into the renovation. But now a classic flaps probably double that. But I loved that bag and I tried it on and I paraded about the store and I looked at it. And even my husband was saying to me, like, it is beautiful but we can't afford to spend that amount of money on a handbag right now. And this was before I knew as much about Chanel as I know now. Not that I'm an expert, but I would yeah. know a bit more about buying bags. But when I did then fast forward a, a bit of time and I had money, I phoned Chanel. I'm sure they thought this was hilarious, but he was on the phone. <laughs> I phoned Chanel and I said, do you remember that teal bag that you had about a year ago or 18 months ago? Is there any chance it's still there? Well, the laughter, once they stopped laughing down the phone about how they might still bag <laughs> that thing. But that definitely got away because I loved that bag, but we just couldn't just couldn't spend the money on it because there was so much work being done in the house. And I've never forgotten that bag because it was stunning. It was such a beautiful and the classic flap wouldn't be the mini works for me more, but I, I do love the classic flap and it, it was stunning. I've never forgotten it. It was Chevron, which is my favorite. The teal color was just beautiful. It was it was lovely. Lovely. That definitely got away and it still haunts me. Mm. Maybe it'll come back now that um, Virgin Virginie, Virginie tends to repeat colors. So Yeah, but I suppose then you're into the question of, I don't know many more classic flaps I would buy from the boutique given the price of them now. Yeah, that's true. You know, like, like that's It probably now would be double what it what it was. I think a classic flap in the UK now, the medium size, is about 8,000 sterling. or So I would be paying about maybe, maybe 8,500, 8, 8 euro for it. Oh, that's a lot of money for a classic flap. I don't know. You'll just have to, you'll just have to, like, in the moment, if you see another one like that, you'll just have to decide then if it's worth it. It's I would hear you're, talking, you're talking to Impulsive Queen. So we're <laughs> <laughs> standing in Chanel and the colors there. Never say mm -hmm. never. Um, <laughs> sometimes sense comes later. But the only good thing about um the Chanel bags though and I have a cheek when I talk about finance on the other channel and it goes out the window and sense goes and I buy it on impulse but the only thing good thing I suppose about a Chanel bag like that and a classic flap is if you do buy it and then you realize what have I done you're generally going to be able to to sell it on easy enough without losing too much money or even you know getting your money back it's I suppose that's one of the comforts of Chanel mm -hmm. with the crazy price increases they usually fare a little bit better than LV and 
Almez is a little different just because unless it's a quota bag and it's also generally, you know, more of like the neutral colors in good condition, people would be a bit more cautious. But yeah, Chanel generally does very well, I would say. I mean, given the recession, kind of the global recession, I, it might not immediately feel that way, but eventually it will bounce back, I feel. With Chanel, with Chanel, I feel. Yeah, I feel Chanel is almost like a micro market of its own. Yeah. There, there's, it's became so sought after, and I suppose Chanel themselves are now playing more games, I suppose you could call them, to limit who's getting the bags of productivity or where they're going to and what you can buy, that it's just increasing the need of that on the resale market, I think. And the price of Chanel bags, obviously the more popular, I think some of the other styles you might lose a wee bit more on, but they're, they're generally decent whenever you're trying to move them on at a later date. Yeah. Chanel, I hate selling Chanel bags and I, I, I'm, I have a few Chanel bags to sell, but um, I really hate letting them go. It feels yeah. like you're, you know, because of this micro market around Chanel and how, and I've heard you say that, Amy, before, about letting Chanel bags go. It's something I, I struggle with, even when they're bags that I know aren't working for me or I'm not using them or I've brought something else in and I've decided I'm letting that go to let something else go. I still don't actually like selling the Chanel bag because it feels, it feels like you're letting go of a bit of, fashion real estate almost yeah, but, um, it does it does and, and even when i'm not using it i feel like yeah. that this is the this is the dilemma i have with two of my bags two of my chanel bags and i, I don't have like a huge chanel collection so one of it was uh which bag did i let go previously oh my um jumbo it took me so long so long to let it go and I mean, I didn't fall out of love. I just wasn't using it as much. But it felt like I was yeah. letting go. <laughs> Something that I know I will never get back again. Like if it, that's it. If you let it go, that's it. It's gone out. So it's really, really hard to sell. The other bag that I just had a chat with Amy. Was it, was it a few days? Was it last week? I don't know. The week seems to be like coming together. Oh, My, last uh, week. <laughs> was it last week? I was talking about the caramel bag. Yeah, because I haven't used it. Like everyone who's asked me about it, I I love it, but I don't use it, and I get so many requests on and off. Like, are you selling your caramel bag? I'm waiting, and I just can't. I I mean, I'm not ready. Like, totally not ready to let it go, because it's exactly what you said. It's real estate. <laughs> it's like this. It you can't get it back. I know if it leaves my hands, it's gone. It's gone. Oh, and God. I think you were, you were talking about it. I'm not even doing it. You're, you're getting you know, hard <laughs> palpitations. <laughs> I don't think that hype is the right word, but there's there's such a buzz isn't the right word either. But there's almost such a status around certain Chanel bags now, like the the classics or the certain colors, that the thought of letting it go, even let, <laughs> sing the Frozen song, let it go. But the thought of letting it go, even whenever you no, you're not using it. It still feels like a big thing. And that t t yeah. to anybody that's not a handbag lover, we sound nuts right now. But it, <laughs> things like, it feels like letting go of something that the whole internet is telling you, don't sell, keep this as a bag you should have and everybody wants. And you're looking at it, you're going, but I don't use you. But it still isn't easy to just go, right, I'm I'm selling it. I'm, I'm oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I... Just, I <laughs> so, so for those of who, who those of you who don't know, um, and Amelia didn't ask us to advertise this, but she is having oh. her blog sale soon. It's actually today in a few hours. So, for those of you who don't want to miss out, make sure. <laughs> and, and, when, and if you obviously. do watch that, I sound so unsure. Like I'm, oh, I'm I sound yeah. like, I, like it, I'm, I'm not very upbeat in it, and I'm like. As in, <laughs> Well, I, I have to offer you my first child for sale because I need a liver. And that's kind of what it sounds like. And I I'm totally just... empathize with that. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's... When I did my vlog sale video, I was, I was, dude, I, I was like, that. I was like, 
It you was know, like you were letting go of a child, cat. <laughs> I think that is that is what you um, have to decide. For you. Like, obviously, you already made the video, so you've made your decision. Yeah. I mean, you can still go back now that you haven't sold it yet. But like, yeah. my point is, usually, you know, it they, these are these these are really hard things to let go, especially with Chanel. And I like the way you described it as a micro economy, whatever market. Um, you know, it's sort of like you have to even shut off not just the outside noise, but your own noise because it yeah. will never leave your collection otherwise. And well, I think like what you said earlier when you were talking about unboxing your Chanel bags, they still when when you you don't come from a very they fit, still feel like an achievement whenever yeah. you are able to buy one of them and you've bought one for yourself and it still feels like you know you you've been able to do that and then when it doesn't work out and the thought of letting it go it's <laughs> yeah i know it's it sounds crazy but it's it it's more it's it's more difficult than just deciding to sell a thing and then yeah, i'm me. sentimental Sally, so i get attached to everything like a crazy person but it's like <laughs> you're deciding to let it go and there's another like a, there's another one that i didn't put in the video but i know it needs to go as well and i and i i need to just accept it but it's it's there's just something like no don't take it away even though there's bags <laughs> in there that you know aren't out of boxes yet but like come on which one would that be the one that isn't in the video that i, yeah. I know i need to sell oh this will, <laughs> no, this, will really, this will really surprise some people it's the hound's tooth oh Oh, you oh, see, yeah. you see, that's exactly what I mean. It's and I was obsessed with that bag. Yeah. Like, I was. There you go. Getting that bag. Use it, I just and I paid a real premium for it, and mm -hmm. I just so like I remember unboxing it and someone saying in the comment box it wasn't one of my normal viewers, but somebody going, "My goodness, love, you're talking about a bag? Would you catch yourself on?" Because I was so so excited about it, but I've used it once for like yeah. an hour once in the and i think the year and a half that i've had it and i and i don't know if it's because it has a neutral base to it that it's not the colors that i go for mm. but because i wear colors it's hard to put with and yeah. i just mm. have, and i know that i need to i need to just be brave get the big girl pants on but it didn't even make it into the vlog sale video because i couldn't i couldn't bring myself to it yet nonsense <laughs> the house well, dude I think it's like that. The, keep reminding yourself that the process, even the process of going through it, as you, many people will reach out to you today and tomorrow mm -hmm. and the rest of the week, you just have to remind yourself that this is going, these are going to better homes and whatever you get back, you will spend on something that you, you know, you will love more or that you actually use you know so that's the point like i have like oh it's, it's actually beside me because i'm in my office like, i bought this where is this oh. camera so i i bought this bag knowing that i was never going to use this bag so i didn't buy me this too bag. me too i never <laughs> bought i never used i used mine once then i that was a hot sell for me it was bad i remember you selling that bag because i I love the multi -cut. I remember. I remember that. I do but have I days that. where I wish I didn't. I'd be like, uh. <laughs> when, I, when I bought this, like I knew I was never going to use this bag, and I bought this bag as decor. So this is my office, and it's it's in the middle of being redone, and there's shelving going in here behind me, and my thoughts for this was this is for decor. This is going to sit on the shelves. Yeah. So I, I bought that knowing that, and that's fine, but. The vast majority of my other bags I bought thinking I would use because I, I wouldn't mm -hmm. say I'm a collector in the true sense of the word, word like Meredith is. So I bought a lot of my, my, most of my bags I bought thinking I would use. So then whenever they don't work and I don't use them, ooh, they weren't bought to just be decor. I know that one was. And I, then I, I, you do just have to make the, the choice of realizing that's not what it's there for. It needs to go and somebody will love that bag and use that bag and, and mm. enjoy that bag. It does not sit, need to be sitting there gathering dust, but I'm slow to make these. I'm getting better. I suppose I'm getting better since I bought more handbags, but um, I need to get even more better if that's even good grammar. I'll tell you the trick, Amelia. 
start our mass journey. <laughs> 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 then you'd be I'm, like, OMG. <laughs> Bye, Chanel. <laughs> Take off the mini Kelly as we go. Um, yeah, I know. I, I don't think I could ever be by Chanel because I love Chanel I, and I love a lot of the, the bags. But um, I, I do take that point, even as not as Hermes, but when there's other bags that you're looking for and it's you're thinking about spending more money in the bags mm -hmm. when there's other bags on the shelf that you never use or never take out or never even really feel drawn to use for someone who can't who is quite like I talk about finance that makes no sense that 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 you're putting more money into them whenever there's one sitting there that you just don't use and that houndstooth bag is one of the ones we were talking about earlier like I really thought that was going to work and I thought I was going to use that bag a lot. And I thought that bag, because it's quite bold and the print of it's quite bold, I thought this will this will really work. And then it's really disappointing when it doesn't because mm. I am busy using it so much. And I, I've used it once and I think it was about an hour, which is nonsense. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm. Uh. So Amelia, I want to ask you this. Um, given your luxury journey so far, if you had to start over, what would you do differently? Or would you not do it any different? That's I was going to too. say I would be less impulsive, but that's lies. Because that's, that's, that's just how I am. I am very impulsive. But I think I would try to figure out... I think I would have trust myself more instead. And, and Dale will talk about this whenever her and I would be talking about tips for people buying their first bags and stuff and it's why I say drown out the noise I think I would trust myself more in knowing what actually I want and what will work for me and not buying what you feel you should buy or what other people think you should buy so for me it was definitely bigger bags more substantial bags I it just didn't work and I knew that that's not what I used in an everyday basis and if I had just thought about that and reflected on it a bit more I would have been able to buy bags from the start that actually worked so I probably I know I definitely would have done that differently I would have also I have I had a speedy 25 and it was in the same sort of color that where is this camera this one it was in the same sort of right. color as this one and it was it was beautiful and then it didn't, it was a bit big and it didn't really work. And I also learned lessons about selling bags when you don't really know what mm. you're doing. And I lost a fortune on that bag. I sold it far too, too, too cheap. I would, in hindsight, I would much rather have it for the times I would have used it, even if they were limited, than for the amount that I sold it for. Because it, And it was because I didn't know what I was doing. And I didn't really know the value of bags then. And I didn't really do much research because I'm impulsive. And I, I would do that differently. Definitely do that differently. Another one that haunts me is I sold a Chanel Square Mini Caviar. And I won't even tell you how much I sold it for because people would be throwing things at the screen. And that haunts me because, again, it was before I really knew about Chanel and bags and the price and stuff. And I, I would just wish I had been a bit more researchful and looked into it a bit more uh, oh Dale no Dale just said in the comment box if you followed your inner colourful voice earlier in your luxe journey would your first bag uh, oh whoa I thought she said would your first bag have still been the Neverfull yes it would have been but that's not what she was asking she knows me better than that she said what would your first bag after the Neverfull have been it would have been a small cross body bright bag like I I thought I had a plain colored mini beside me, but I don't. So, okay, maybe it didn't need to be as colorful as this, but it would have been some sort of pouch bag that is crossbody, smaller, Beautiful. and a bright color that I could have, that I know I would have used. Like I, the black bag, Amy, that you have, the black Louis Vuitton bag that's discontinued, I think. Deal yeah, maybe had twice. That, if something like that in a bright color, Probably yeah. because after the Neverfull, I wouldn't have been able to afford a Chanel Mini as my next bag. But a version of like that Louis Vuitton bag you had or a bright, small pouch that would have been crossbody. And that would have worked 
far better for me. Mm -hmm. I think the bag I bought after the Neverfull was either the Speedy 25, which was too big for, and I know it's not a huge Speedy, but for me wearing it cross body, it was too big and too bulky and sat out too much. It was either that or the Brea. Mm. So mm. I wouldn't, if I had known, I would have bought a smaller pouch type crossbody color bag. And I probably like your black one, Amy, would still be using it and would still be able to get good use out of it because I didn't listen to what actually worked for me. Mm. I would do that differently, definitely. That that bag is still available in the pre-love market. I think they did make it in red for sure. I don't know if it, there's a fuchsia pink at all. I'm not. But sure even a red, you know, if I if even say a red would have anything bright. Yeah, there was a red have, for sure. Worked, rather than buying what I thought I should buy, mm. as in proper handbags, but they never. They're not. I think like that bra I used for about twenty minutes. It's a disgrace. Mm. <laughs> We have a very I'm fun time having this therapy session. I'm going to feel so much <laughs> when we get off camera. You can come back for therapy, like another <laughs> luxury live show next year when we schedule you again. Like, obviously, you you might have to wake up very early again <laughs> <laughs> and ask your husband to to care for your kids. But, I had uh, my face washed at six o'clock this morning. I know what happens. Like face washed and teeth brushed before the sun rose. <laughs> I was taking my dogs out this morning. So obviously I had to take the dogs out before we came yeah. here. And uh, even they were waking up in their beds going, Mommy, what are you doing? It's still dark out there. I'm like, come on, puppies, out we go. Anyway, so it's not, um, not Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to your poor puppies. <laughs> Committed to the handbags, love. Ha to the handbag, love. We're committed to the handbag love. Yes, yes. So Jesse wants to ask, if you could make an Hermes special order, what would you choose? That's a good one. Well, many, uh, now that I have, if I hadn't have had this, mm -hmm. I, where is the camera on this? You can tell this is not <laughs> what I film on. I don't know where the camera is. If I hadn't have had this, uh -huh. this would have been my exact special order. So it would have been the oh. exact color. Maybe oh. the, only, the only thing I maybe would have done is I, I know that if you do a special order, you can put a different color inside. Yes. So I maybe would have done that. But if I didn't have this, my special order on the outside would look exactly like this bag. There would have been no different colored stitches or no no different hardware. It would, would have been exactly this. So. But because I have that, if I was to get a special order now, it would definitely be a mini Kelly. And it would be mm. a really bright one. And I would probably try now, if the Hermes gods want to present me with a bright pink mini Kelly, I'm obviously not going to say no. But I would maybe, if I was doing a special order, go for a different color because I have the Birkin in that color. And then I have this one which is kind of the size and shape of a mini kelly and is the same color and i love this bag so i wouldn't want to stop using this bag so i think if i was to get a special order maybe a, a bright yellow or a purple or the one that cassie thorpe got not that long ago i'm not sure what oh, you call yeah. that orange color orange is it poppy is it is it oh. Is it? like an orange it's, and it's not the it's not the muted orange one she got it's almost like a tangerine like really really bright that's a beautiful color that is a beautiful color or malachite i really love teal mm. as well so if if it would be a, a mini kelly in one of those types of colors i'm not sure which one because i could love them all <laughs> everyone um hmm, might be bankrupt but it would be one of those types of colors and probably with another color on the inside. I don't think I would do colored stitching. Mm. I don't think I would do color stitching. I think I would keep it all the same on the outside. And I can, I don't think I would put any other colors on bits of leather or anything. On the straps, on the straps, yeah, right? No, I don't no. think I would. I think I would keep it all the same color and probably put a different color on the inside. And then the hardware, 
I, I wear both gold and silver, so I would probably choose what went best with whatever color I had went for, I think. And that would be a dream. That would be so much fun. Yeah, orange oh, poppy. They're, they're, they're in the comments, it's orange poppy that Cassie has. That's a fab mm. color. Mm. It's like a real zesty orange. I think it's it's really, really cool. Yes. It's really bright and it's it's bright in a good way. It's not like um mm. it's not like Gordy. It's actually it's, it's not neon. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think like... neon sometimes can be a bit hard to style, but it's just the right level of brightness. I think it's it's beautiful. It's fabulous. Really, really beautiful. We have um this question from my cup of tea. Amelia, did your fashion, namely outfits, change or improve after you start buying luxury bags? Or in other words, did your taste in fashion and styling change? <laughs> if my husband answered this question, he would probably tell you it's the opposite. And it's because <laughs> I started buying bags as I got a bit older. And that's also when I had our children. So before we had, I had my first son just before a couple of weeks before my 35th birthday and I had my second son when I was 38. So, and that was around about the time when I was buying more bags because I had more disposable income. Before I had them, I probably would have been more styled and put together and fashionable all the time because I wasn't, I didn't have the children and I, it, we were going out like at the weekends for lunch or for going into town or something. So it it probably coincided at the time when they came along. And before that, it would have I probably made a lot more effort in his words, I've no doubt he would say. <laughs> um, because it wasn't running around after two boys or having a pram and carrying a changing bag and a buggy and changing nappies and all that jazz. So that probably came a period then in the middle where I probably dressed a lot more out of comfort and ease and what was easy to run after them and comfortable to run after them and I'm probably starting to come out of that again because my youngest is three now so not that it's it's easy at that age but it's getting a little bit easier because he's able to converse with you a bit better so whenever it's probably coming back again now that my style is changing back to being more stylish and more put together whereas there was definitely a is in the middle where I think my husband wants and before I say this he's actually a nice person but I think <laughs> my husband once told me that I, I was the new watching. <laughs> oh, he doesn't watch I, mean, I would be in too much trouble if he watched he doesn't know what half his bags <laughs> was. Um, but I think he once he, he told me once that I looked like a hobo <laughs> because it was literally just throwing on whatever worked to go out and then that also coincided with the time that my youngest was only about one and a one ish whenever my dad died and he died right really suddenly so when he died I put a lot of weight on very very quickly mm -hmm. and I didn't know what to do with it I didn't know how to style it I didn't know how to dress it none of my wardrobe fit because I'd never been that size before and it so it went from having a young child loads of weight on my wardrobe not fitting I literally just covered myself I just mm -hmm. wore one covered me rather than thinking about style or putting it together and it's only really I suppose now that I'm I'm dealing with the weight get it's not all back off but there's a good bit of it back off stuff are starting to fit the boys are getting up a bit that I'm now getting back into properly putting looks together and outfits together and fashion together and I think the bags if you look at that period of time I bought a lot of bags and it was probably because I was very unhappy with myself and I didn't really buy clothes because of the size I was and nothing looked right and I didn't I didn't know how to dress that size so I probably bought in that period of time a huge amount of bags because I wasn't buying anything else but I still felt like I was investing in fashion and buying things by buying the bags but uh, so it's I think it's coming back now I've definitely been buying a lot more clothes recently and putting a lot more time into putting things together and outfits together and it's changing again. So I think it's definitely been, it's definitely been a, a journey over the last few years. Mm. I'm going to pull one comment from a 
Joe. It's kind of funny. Haha, <laughs> my kids kids <clears throat> change everything. My kids are similar age to Amelia and understand, understandably, we have less time to dress up and toddlers, oh my God, <laughs> are like hamsters. <laughs> yes, they are. I feel you. Yes, they are. They don't stop. They don't, <laughs> they don't stop. <laughs> they don't stop. And, and my youngest, if like he is, he was only five-ish months whenever we went into lockdown. So mm. he had so much time with me that my young, my oldest went, was used to daycare and other people very early because I had to go back to work very early. But my youngest had that period of time with me. And there was times that if he could climb back into my uterus, he would do it. He <laughs> is such a mommy's boy. He is <laughs> so clingy. And, and you'll say to him when, when you're saying to him, you know, if you say his name, he'll go, I'm the baby. I'm the baby. I'm the baby. And he's he's really clicked on to this, that, that he is the youngest. He is the baby. He's very clingy. So I can come down the stairs and I think I look great. And I have put together and I have a nice outfit on. And, you know, I, I have a bag and everything. And he just runs at you. And the next minute there's Play-Doh on the back of you. And there's pasta sauce on the front of you. And you're <laughs> <laughs> and you're maybe wearing things that there are certain clothes as well for carrying children don't work. So you're maybe wearing a bit of a heel and you're tottering about trying to carry him or you're in, in a blazer. Cause I used to wear a lot of blazers, but it's restrictive and you're trying no, to carry yes. That's it's, it's still, it's a choice. It's a lifestyle choice. <laughs> Once they're boys, boys are way more active. And they're boys. Yeah. They're boys. They don't stop. They're just like, uh, my mother-in-law warned me whenever we were having the the oldest that my husband was crazy. <laughs> she he has a scar on his head here, where when he was two, he was in their hall and the porch door was closed and he ran through the glass. It didn't get any better. That's that's. that's he, he's he's oh. so like, yeah so she was warning me when i was six seven eight months pregnant and getting more nervous by the day about you know him running through the the, the glass or she would turn around and he would be gone they'd be in the supermarket and he would be three aisles down climbing into the freezer hiding behind the frozen veg or like she'd put him in the garden he would climb through the hedges and he'd be down the street and she'd be out running after him down the street they hid all this from me <laughs> Whenever we got married and before children came. And and then my 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 son, my oldest, is just like his daddy. He just <laughs> like daddy. and the youngest is a dynamo. Like we have the field behind us with the cows that you'll sometimes see in, in my my videos, and you'll turn around and they're in the field with the cows. And there's like there's wire fencing and, and everything, and, and you'll turn around and they're in the field with the cows. And the cows have massive big and they luckily the the boys have grown up with cows and the cows have kind of grown up with the boys, but I still have to be a responsible parent because mm -hmm. I don't want services at my door. And the, the, the <laughs> boys will be in the field. Turn, like I've maybe turned my back for 30 seconds and they're in the field running about with the cows and then the dogs have followed them. The, the wee small blonde dog, Ginger, she's followed them. She's running around the field with the cows. Mental. Mental. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's very, very fun, but it's definitely not. Doesn't not really easy. fit with having a nice put together look and, you know, <laughs> having your, your fashion and your hair done and your shoes on. And they're it's, somebody says in the comments that they need a leash for their son. Yes. Yes. You know, they just, they just go. Um, and my youngest is, he's a dynamo. My mom says that he's my fault because she says I would have been quite headstrong. Don't know where she got that from. But when, when he decides he's doing something, he's doing it. Mental. Yeah. But it's fun. It's fun. It's just, it's just from the minute they open their eyes to the minute they go to sleep, doesn't stop. Now we know why you're so busy. busy. <laughs> Chasing hamsters around. <laughs> hamsters. You know, and my oldest who joined us earlier is if he's asked us once for a hamster, he's asked 25 million times. <laughs> and the top of his Santa list is a hamster. And he was in hospital on Thursday and he had to get a bit of work done. And 
my husband asked him, you know, what he wanted as a, as a treat, a hamster. <laughs> it's, it's a zoo. Like, it really <laughs> is a zoo. Oh. Well, okay. that is why, everyone, you should thumbs up this video. Make sure you are subscribed to Amelia's Amelia Rose's Closet. Again, her channel is already linked in the description. And we are at the two-hour mark. So I will end with this last question. I will just like put this. There's a few more, but we'll end with this one. Amelia, if you could only have one luxury bag for every day, not for work, not for your diapers or anything, which one would it be? <laughs> okay, so not the Neverfill because that's the work yeah. bag. If it was an everyday bag, I would probably have a Chanel Mini in caviar if possible or the reissue the now mine obviously the graffiti one d doesn't have to be as bold as that but that the leather that's on that's also really hardy I think yeah and I think for me that if I don't need to carry all the stuff those are really really usable and they if you if you get a color that works for you I think you can wear that with basically every outfit mm -hmm. and when I I would often even the the reissue obviously doubles the chains up, so that's easier for nighttime. But if I've been going somewhere out at night that needed a color that's in one of the normal minis, I just chuck or tuck the chain into them and carry them as a clutch bag. So I think probably if I could get one, a Chanel mini in a color that would work with so many things, because I think it's such a great bag from every day to nighttime to whatever, as long as you're not someone that carries a huge amount, I think they're great bags. I would probably say, for me, they are a better buy than what the classic flap is mm. Mm. for usability. That is Lost amazing. Wear. Awesome. I, I have to agree. I, I love those two bags. The, those minis that I have, they will never go anywhere. I have the same one that you have in the, the 18B, the raspberry one. Yeah. And it, because it's caviar, like I have, I probably, I have a pink one that's lambskin and I probably, no, not probably, I do prefer the color of the pink one and the mm. pink one's chevron and I probably prefer the chevron. But that one that we have is probably my most used mm. because it's caviar and it's it's quite bright and the yeah. caviar is just, you really don't need to worry about yes. it. Yes. Those two years, 2017, 18, those caviars are very durable. Yeah, like I, I yeah. we when we were in Paris last Christmas, when it oh my goodness, it rained nonstop and really, really heavy rain. That's the bag that I used the the caviar red one or pinky red one, mm -hmm. and it still looks like brand new, and like yeah. it was drenched. So good. And it was, it still looks like and as much as lambskin, I know people say not to be scared of the lambskin, and I do think the color takes on lambskin maybe slightly better, but I'm just always a bit more aware of it. Mm -hmm bit more aware of looking after it so probably if i could get one a, ca a caviar mini or a reissue in that is that calfskin that bag yeah uh, yeah because yeah. it's it's pretty hardy as well i think yeah 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 the the one that is croc and boss right mm -hmm. yeah it is calfskin that's why I, I i've told you this many times but that's how i find you your oh, review of yeah. that your, your review of the graffiti mini yeah i must have watched about 20 times before I put my <laughs> on. And I actually find me, I found Kat through makeup. Oh! It was actually initially through makeup. And at the start, I didn't realize that you did you had luxury as well. So then when I started watching your videos, that's how, but it was through makeup. I initially found Kat and Chanel Mini for Amy. Oh, thank you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> We loved having you with us. Thanks Amelia. for having me. It's been loads of fun. The two hours flies in. Sorry? It goes by two so hours. Yeah, two hours. Yeah, very Everyone fast. that does our lives with us, we're like, oh, how are we going to talk for two hours? And when it goes by, they're like, oh, so that's, that's it? <laughs> we would Thanks love so. to have you back again. I We have some questions we haven't even answered, but I'm sure the audience would love to have you back. <laughs> and... Um, We'll, we'll try to coordinate with you again. But now, <laughs> now that you know how it works, we might not have to do the testing again. <laughs> yeah, and no, it's been way. really fun. It's, it's been, I think the live idea is great whenever, 
Like I could talk about handbags probably all day long, mm. but like most of us, there's nobody in everyday life to talk about handbags exactly. all day long too. So it's lovely to have a more interactive chat and then ha- and people are able to actually, I don't know how you guys do it, by the way, you're managing that and keeping an eye on the comments, <laughs> but being able, people are actually able to chat with you as you go. It's a great concept. It's really, really good. It works really well, I think. It's a great community. So, mm-hmm. I mean, since we started this live, it's, I mean, usually... Today everybody's talking to you as well, but sometimes they don't even they don't even talk to us anymore. They talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of talk to each other too today, but they yeah, did yeah. ask you a lot of questions as well, which is amazing. <laughs> that means they're paying Love attention. <laughs> yeah. All right. But then. thank you so much for coming on uh, again, everyone. Please so make sure to subscribe to Cat and to Amelia, and also check out Amelia's vlog sale coming in. Mm-hmm. Is it six hours? Two hours. Six hours, right? Yeah. So and it's, what time is it? It's nine here, so it's about six yes, hours. Six, six. I think. Yeah. My miles was great there. <laughs> Amazing. And yeah, so next week there will be uh, the live is on your channel. Yeah, uh, on Cat's channel. There's a live tomorrow. Oh, and there's a live tomorrow, a members live on my channel, and it will be at 10 p.m. Vancouver time, and that would be your 2, 2 p.m. PM. Your 2 yeah. p.m. 2 p.m. Singapore time. But yeah, we'll say goodbye here, and thank you so much for joining you us. Thank you, Amelia. <laughs> you have to be two of the hardest working ladies in this community because you're doing this again <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.